The time has come, geographers, to take over the world. Wait, what's, what's going on? And in order for us to be able to take over the world, we'll have to understand the Heartland Theory. This video is going to be going over everything you need to know about that theory and world domination. Let's figure out what the Heartland Theory is. This video is all about the Heartland Theory by Halford McKinder. Now this video is going to be looking at how this Heartland Theory has been used in history. We'll be looking at examples of it, both current day and also in the past, and how this theory connects to kind of taking over the world. While watching the video, make sure to use your guided notes. You can find them in the description below. The guided notes go along with the video and it'll help you make sure you understand all the main concepts. Who rules East Europe commands the Heartland. Who rules the Heartland commands the World Island. And who rules the World Island commands the world. Halford McKinder. We're going to be looking at this quote from McKinder and how it connects into his theory and how all of this connects to actually taking over the world. Let's start though from the beginning. So the Heartland Theory was created in 1904 by Halford J. McKinder. And this theory looks at geography, history, and it connects to land-based powers and sea-based powers. These are the two different types, essentially, of military powers that the theory is looking at. And this theory has been used by many people throughout history, Hitler being one of them. And we're going to get into how Hitler used this theory later on in the video. But it is very important to understand the significance of this theory. It's dictated not only the past for geopolitical struggles, but also the current day. Some believe that McKinder was a geographic determinist. He viewed society as being influenced by their geography. He looked both at the past and the current day to see exactly how society has been shaped by the terrain and their geographic features that they have. Now, he also, though, acknowledged the role of technology. So he didn't completely discredit humans and also their ability to adapt. Technology and the geographic things were the big focus, though, of his theory. He believed those were the two factors that would determine what would happen to a geographic area. When analyzing the terrain, McKinder noticed a couple different things. One, if the land was open, without a lot of vegetation or obstacles, if it was low land, it made it easy for other states to come in and conquer the states occupying that territory. Because of this, these geographic areas normally were dominated by one state, and that state had conquered other people that now they're in charge of. So a state had very easy time taking over the area. However, if there was obstacles in the terrain, like mountains or a forest that made it difficult for a state to get through, that normally acted as a barrier and separated two different states. McKinder did note, though, that with technology, these barriers may be able to be overcome, and eventually, a state could go through. But those barriers would make it more difficult. So areas that were open were easy to take over and were normally ruled by one party. And when we saw barriers, particularly mountains or different things that made it difficult for an enemy to go through, we saw it then split between two different states. And this becomes really important for us to understand when looking at the Heartland Theory. Because these natural barriers, or lack of natural barriers, will define a variety of parts of the theory. One of the interesting things about McKinder and his Heartland Theory is he continued to change it over time. Originally proposed in 1904 in a lecture, The Geographic Pivot of History, McKinder first introduced the world to this theory and concept of world domination. Now, over time though, things changed in the real world, and McKinder changed his theory with it. So in 1919, he published a book, The Democratic Ideals of Reality. And here, really what we started to see is this heartland that I keep talking about change. And then again, he changed his theory in 1943 in an article that he penned on the round world and the winning of peace. In all these different versions, really what he did is kind of redefine this heartland area. Another thing that McKinder noticed is due to colonialism and imperialism, the world was kind of discovered. And with this became a new connected world. Now, one of the things that he noticed was there was relationships happening. What happened in the UK impacted all their different colonies, impacted other parts of the world. There is a relationship now between the two countries and between different regions. And at the same time, he also noticed that what happened in, let's say, India also impacted the UK. It went both ways. 
Before, people thought it was more of a one-way streak. Here, though, Mackinder noticed that it went back and forth. If there was conflict within India or in some of the colonies, well, that impacted the British. And not just the British, but all the different countries in the world. It is a back and forth relationship. And this created a new different type of governing. We have to now focus not just on the regional scale, but politicians have to be aware of different events around the world and how that might impact their country at home and abroad. And that is where this theory starts to take shape. Mackinder broke this theory into two main parts, the world island and the outer island. The world island was made up of Africa, Europe, and Asia. And the outer islands was made up of the Americas, the British Isles, and Australasia. Now, if anyone were to control the world island, if any one country, state, or alliance, well, they would be able to control the world. And that's because they'd be able to outproduce any of the other countries, both with population, but also weapons and resources. And so it is imperative that the world island remain in check. Now, let's actually zoom in a little bit on the world island and break this down even further. When looking at the world island, we can also see that this can be broken into two parts as well, the heartland and the rimland. Now, originally the heartland was known as the pivot point, and the rimland was known as the inner crescent. Now, these changed as Mackinder continued to evolve his theory. Now, both of these are crucial to understanding how to take over the world island. Now, the rimland consists of Arabia, Western Europe, East Asia, and India. When looking at the heartland, we can see a couple different characteristics that really define the region. The first thing we can notice is there is real no access to the sea or the oceans, so it's landlocked. This actually helps protect them. And we're actually gonna come back to this in a little bit. The next feature we can see is that it has kind of an arid climate. This forces the people there to be nomadic. And the heartland is also, for the most part, pretty flat, which lets transportation and travel happen relatively easily. This promotes a more nomadic lifestyle and actually gives the advantage, especially when we're looking in the past with history and when we're talking about things like the Mongol Empire. They were able to control most of the heartland because of horses, and they were constantly on the move, conquering other territories. Remember in the beginning of this video when we talked about geographic features, how normally one state will end up being controlling of an area when it's completely flat and open, and they'll conquer the other states that were, at least before they got there, living there. And that's because it's easy to take over. And this is really important when understanding the heartland, because this defines the heartland. Now when looking at the rimland, this is characterized by the sea. We can see that actually they can move any of the empires within the Rimland relatively easy with the ocean. And with a navy, they can have a superior advantage over the heartland. They can flank an attack from behind and they can relatively easily at least spread their empires with not a lot of risk. This is a huge advantage as they can collect more resources and maybe can get the upper hand over the heartland region. Now as time went on, industrialization came to the world and rail came. And now this is really important, especially for this heartland region, because as more and more train tracks were laid, this gave actually the advantage to the heartland as the heartland starts to become connected through rail. Trains actually had a couple different things that made them superior to ships. Trains do not have to go into a port like the ships do for repairs. Trains can go very quickly over a geographic area and deliver troops, resources to certain points. The other thing that started to happen was airplanes eventually were created. This let the heartland, if they wanted to, attack ships without the ships being able to actually attack the heartland. And so the heartland was now becoming more and more connected, which allowed them to have movement again to all of the different geographic focal points that maybe might come up in a battle. And this then lets them mobilize very quickly, giving an advantage to the heartland over the rimland. Now we're gonna start getting into this theory more and more and start seeing how it's been used. When industrialization was happening, well, the Russian empire was the ones who were really starting to take over the heartland. And with rail, they were able to continue their expansion. The Russian Empire looked like it was going to take over all of the heartland. And when it had all of the heartland, it would be able then to command the world island. Through commanding the world island, they could start to build up their naval forces and they would be able to make more and more advances into the Rimland and eventually get into those outer islands. However, unfortunately for the Russian Empire, it didn't work out. They collapsed. 
and in 1919, McKinder went back and reevaluated his Heartland theory. One of the things he noticed is that the Heartland was actually protected with a bunch of different geographic boundaries, both on the south and also on the east. However, the western part of the Heartland was exposed. It didn't have any deserts like other parts of the Heartland or mountains. In fact, the western part was open. And this is where Eastern Europe comes to play. You see, so far we've been looking at the part of the quote that talks about who rules the heartland, commands the world island. However, now Mackinder realizes it's not just that. It's whoever rules Eastern Europe commands the heartland. See, Eastern Europe had the ability to be able to move into the heartland with relative ease. And Germany, Mackinder believed, was at the focal point. They were at a prime location to be able to invade the heartland. Hitler actually will later use this theory to try and take out the Soviet Union. This is why Hitler uses his panzer division and pushes into the Soviet Union, because he was actually trying to take over the heartland, which he believed would have given him the win in World War II. Mackinder also believed that China could become a big player in the heartland as well, and they could even become the ruler of it. This would be a big deal, because China is located both in the Rimland and the northern part of China is in the heartland. The geographic boundaries in the heartland would give them an advantage there, and the ports in the Rimland portion of China would allow them to maneuver around the world. They would be able to do a variety of strategic attacks on other countries, which would help them in the war. However, China would have to develop a lot more and gain more economic and military power in order to do this. And to this day, China hasn't been able to do so. However, there has been some concern recently with China in the South China Sea and also with their new trade initiative where they are now starting to create infrastructure throughout the heartland. Mackinder created this theory not as a prophecy, but a warning to the world. He believed that countries needed to be able to pay attention to the world and act accordingly. That no one can sit in full isolation and just allow countries to do what they please because each country affects other countries. McKinner believed that the Rimland powers needed to be vigilant. They needed to make sure that the Middle East remained out of the control of the heartland and that the coastal areas around the world island remained free for the Rimland powers to use their navy to transport around the world. Otherwise, the Rimland would lose their mobility advantage and the Heartland would be able to take over the World Island. And if you controlled the World Island, well, you can control the world because you'll be able to outproduce all of the other islands. And so it is imperative again for these Rimland powers to be vigilant. That's also why we see more conflicts in the world in the Middle East, from the Iraq wars to Afghanistan, where we also see the South China Sea as a major contention point, the Persian Gulf, the Korean War. All these areas are in key spots for the Rimland powers to make sure that the heartland never gets control of. We can look throughout history and connect it back to a variety of historical events. All of these things connect back to this theory. And it's all this balancing act between trying to make sure that no one power can control the heartland. Even when we're looking at the Cold War and we look at Eastern Europe, notice how Eastern Europe is divided up into a bunch of different states. This makes it more difficult for one country or one state to fully control all of Eastern Europe. And again, if you control Eastern Europe, you can command the heartland. And if you command the heartland, you command the world island. And if you can command the world island, well, you can control the world. And this is Mackinder's theory. Now there's one part of the world we really haven't talked about yet, and that's the Americas. And Mackinder didn't forget about the Americas. He viewed the Americas as an important check. In fact, the Midland Ocean, he believed, would pair with Western Europe. And this alliance between the two would help keep in check both Eastern Europe and also the heartland. And if any of these two groups started to gain power, and if it looked like someone would take over the heartland, well, then the Midland Ocean and also Western Europe would act, and they would stop it from occurring. This was the last kind of defense. And we can actually see this play out with NATO during the Cold War and after World War II, where Western Europe and the United States came together to promote capitalism and counter the Soviet Union. The United States adopted a containment policy to try and prevent the domino effect of all these countries turning communist and joining the Soviet Union. If that would have happened, well, the Soviet Union would have completely taken over the heartland. And then we would have possibly had a very different world today. NATO actually was able to help defeat and slow down the communist spread. 
The original goal of the alliance was to counter that spread of communism. That created eventually the Iron Curtain and this tension throughout all of Eastern Europe, which stopped the Soviets from completely taking it over. That also created the Shatterbelt region, as we saw these two external forces continue to battle over different areas throughout the world. This theory has held merit over time, and it has been a very big influence on a lot of politicians and military commanders throughout our history. Now, the Heartland theory is imperfect. In fact, one of the things it kind of puts too much emphasis on is transportation. That's really key to this entire theory. If you haven't noticed by now, that's what makes or breaks a state. The Heartland has power because they can quickly mobilize within the Heartland to attack different parts of the Rimland. And the Rimland balances that power out through their navy, being able to outmaneuver the Heartland and to be able to flank from behind. Hopefully this video has helped you better understand the Heartland theory. It's really important to understand this theory and you can connect it to so many different historical events and also the world today. The next video that I'm gonna have is going to get into the Rimland theory. This actually builds off of the Heartland theory. So make sure you check out that video. You can click the card right now to see that video. If this video helped you out, consider subscribing. It helps support the channel and you'll be able to find other videos to help you hopefully with your studies. Thank you again for watching. I'm Mr. Sin and we just learned how to take over the world. Now, I have to go back, find my clones, start my Mr. Sin army, and continue my plan for world domination. Until next time, I'll see you online.